Roger, boy, what a match. You're up two sets to love. Stan gets treated for an injury timeout, comes out with tape on his knee. What changed at that point in the match? Um, well, it's good to talk about the bad stuff first, I guess, but... Yeah, let's get it out of the way. Come on, there's more good stuff coming, I promise. There's good stuff coming good. <laughs> oh, thank God. But all right, Roger, so that was an hour and 14 minutes, so I've been instructed by Channel 7 to do an hour-long interview with you here for the crowd. <laughs> Andy Roddick came into this tournament with a lot of confidence. He'd played beautifully. He'd taken you out in an exhibition in Kuyong. He beat some great players en route to the semifinals, but you completely dismantled him out here tonight. And I have just one question. Well, I have a lot of questions, but the first one is, why'd you do it? <laughs> that confusion. All right. So you didn't get your matches in Koo Young, but there was a possibility that you were going to play one extra match, but you just decided to come out here and practice and get your sets in right here on, uh, at the stadium, yeah? Well, yeah, maybe I could have maybe played on Saturday, but uh, then I don't, didn't want all the fuss about the media, me playing there, they analyzing my game and thinking they knew best, so I just thought, you know what, I'll stay hey, here. Hey, 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 don't take any shots. I'm there analyzing your game, kid. Well, you came later. You would have seen it anyway. That's a lot. Do they stay in, in one of your 18 bedrooms in your apartment? or? And why wasn't I invited? <laughs> well, you, I, mean, I know. You're pretty good. You know, you could still play with me, so... Um... Hold on. Let me get the checkbook out. That was nice. <laughs> There's not a lot of doubt for you in the way you're playing right now, but I understand that you like to play some video games. Is that true? Well, once in a while. Do, do you play any tennis video games? Sure, sure. Do these tennis video games have let's say, Rafael Nadal in them, or Andy Roddick, or players like that? Some games do have them as well, yeah. Do they have Roger Federer in them also? Absolutely. So when you're playing these video games, do you play as you, or do you play as Rafa or someone else? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I do, I do change, you know. I like to play with Rafa just, uh, you know, to see how a muscle game feels like. See what it's like to be a lefty, maybe? For instance, or, you know, have the big bomb like Andy. I don't have those things, you know, so... It's a little way of feeling like them sometimes. And, well, 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 what do you have in these video games? What, what's your weaponry? Well, two all around, you know, it's not, not so, so much fun. I'd rather have, you know, the big serve or, you know, the incredible forehand, but they gave me the all-rounder. It's nice, you know, to be good in all areas, but I'd rather be good just in one. <laughs> and, you know, we have good personalities against each other, so um, I'm happy I, I won tonight. Uh, I thought uh, Murat started to play really well towards the end, so uh, I'm happy I got through in the end because it seemed like a deja vu. So it doesn't really matter who wins, you just enjoy playing him. Can I ask you what your career record is with him? Uh, I've beat him more than he beat me, so I really enjoy playing against him. I think it's like 10 and 2, something like that. Is that sound about right? Yeah, you know the facts. <laughs> I mentioned you know, you're obviously an incredible tennis player, but you also care about things that I don't care about, like fashion. <laughs> Clearly, I don't care about it. But when you come to Wimbledon, you know, you wear like a jacket sometimes, you, you brook a sweater. What do you bring in here at the Australian Open? What's your fashion tip? Well, the, the gray jumper is really in at the moment. <laughs> right? I mean, who doesn't have a gray jumper, right? Everybody has one. I mean, there's like, what, 5,000 here tonight? Well, maybe not jumpers, but like shirts and stuff. Gray's a great color, you know? Um, belt. Uh, I got the belt going, yeah. Yeah, you saw that right. What are you checking me out? It's, it's got the RF on the belt, right? Yeah, just that I remember who I am, so... Yeah. How about the shoes? What's going on with the shoes? Yeah, the shoes have my uh, initials on it as well, so I, if I lose them, I know they're mine. And, uh, yeah, they got three symbols on there for my three titles here, so that's a nice thing, right? No. It's a pretty good thing to have. Now, I saw uh, we're doing the match with Djokovic and Amir Delic today, and he was wearing your shoes. But did he, does he get the three things on his shoes? Yeah, he's paying me to wear them, so... 
no. <laughs> Unfortunately not. <laughs> that would be a really a bit easy, right? Selling shoes undercover? No, that's not my style. Um, but I think, honestly, I'm not kidding, but I think Burdich is also playing with my shoes. So, <laughs> and I'm playing him, so I'm going to tell Nike, no way he's playing with my shoes. So he's got to change shoes. So I already got the whole thing planned. Now what about playing against this young guy? There, there are a lot of the, the, the young crew that are coming up, and they're ready to come after you. And did you come out to send a message to, to this young man tonight? Well, I could have called him or sent him a, by mail, but... <laughs> No, uh, no. Look, uh, these guys all guys. It's great to see a, a new young group coming up because, uh, yeah, I mean we've had. Because you're bored. Before. I know. No, no, no. That's what that's what you think. I'm very motivated. I'm only 25. Come on. <laughs> you're only 25, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Talk to me about the, the, the video board, because I see you on the changeovers watching sort of the highlights and checking your form out. Are you happy with the way you look up there? You look very beautiful, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, we say all these nice things about you, but we can't call you modest anymore, I guess. That's gone. Talking to you. <laughs> One thing that was interesting was in the third set, it seemed like you started to show a little bit more of your repertoire, particularly that slice backhand point. You guys had about 15 slices back and forth. Did you enjoy that? That's why I came here today, to win that rally. <laughs> that was, you know, in practice you do that for fun a lot, and, and the match courts, you know, you don't muck around like this usually. <laughs> but. Uh, Look, it worked out. I won the point. I'm happy. He's disappointed, and that's perfect. <laughs> well, ambassador since since April, big press conference in New York. You know, what's what's up, mate? You got a bear. You got a bear. Keep talking. Uh, India. We stay focused on India. Push through that. We got also these. They're smaller. They cost 10.95, and you can get them on UNICEF.com, or then you can. I don't know, call a number. I guess they got numbers to call, but uh, and, uh, it would be great if you buy such pairs because they're really cute. They got my name on their back, my ranking, and they got the Wilson racket going as well. So he's a, he's, he's a good guy. Did did you? <laughs> it's good. It is very good. Were were you involved in the the design? Because Serena Williams' designs are clothes, you know, I thought, well, did you get involved in that? Yeah, I designed bears at the end of my career, so... <laughs> did you get up extra for this match because you saw him coming for you? Absolutely, and uh, that's why I didn't read the papers today. I didn't switch on the TV. <laughs> You're into the third round, that's not too bad. 2009 was not a bad year to be Roger Federer either, on the court. But I want to talk to you about the off-court. There's a lot that was going on. Do you mind? It depends what you're going to ask. Well, you don't have a choice. This is my microphone. I know. Uh, for those who know me, uh, I got a little emotional. Shocker. A shocker, right? I mean, I, I cannot believe I did that. But uh, uh, I thought after nine to ten years, I won't get emotional at the wedding. But there was no chance to get around that one. And, and uh, I tell you, is it going to be a pretty good catch, Mirka? The, uh, the diaper issue. Are you involved? <laughs> It's the, the obvious question, isn't it? I'm the obvious guy for it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I've done it before. Uh, I will probably do it again tonight, maybe. So, um, we'll see how it goes. So far, it's been good, you know? Probably like 24 a day, so... <laughs> not, not, not all of them, you know, I don't do them all, but uh, it's intense. I saw you earlier today in the lunchroom, and I got to spend a little time with your father, actually, who I haven't spent much time with, and, and I... I thought to myself, I mean, he's a really, really nice man. And I thought to myself, what happened to Roger? <laughs> what happened to you? That's how it goes. Not everybody can be good guys, you know, in the family. You need one rebel. That would be me. <laughs> You're the rebel, yeah. I could definitely see that. That's in your experience. One thing that, that is probably overlooked is your fitness. It, it takes great physical strength and stamina to do what you do out here and make it look easy. Do you train really hard in the off-season? Can you give me any tips, anything you can talk about? No, oh, it's all talent. That don't work. I just sit on the couch. <laughs> Take care. Uh, 
Now you've really upset me. <laughs> you, you thought you had something going, right? That you were one of those, like with Lendl, that you know made us generation work hard. Not with me, anyway. I, I didn't get inspired. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I, all I do is really just take care of the kids. You know, that's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh... Well, last year, that makes me feel even worse, by the way, thanks. <laughs> last year was a very special year for you off court. We talked about that earlier, about the kids, about how you're a diaper specialist now. But it was also a fantastic year for you on court. What stands out for you? You accomplished a lot last year. What, what stands out uh, from on court in 2009? <sighs> All the hard work I put in, you know. On the couch with the kids? <laughs> yeah. No, just to get back, I do work hard in the off-season, just so that's clear. But, uh, uh, no, I think um, it's so hard to pick, you know, is it the French, is it the Wimbledon? I just think the French Open really uh, sort of relaxes my mind, you know, um, knowing that I can come to the French Open from now on and enjoy it, you know. I mean, not that I didn't before, but I, I just uh, a touch more now, you know, because I won't get asked the silly question, are you ever going to win the French Open? Is your game good enough? All you had to do was ask me. <laughs> well. I thought you were gonna, you know, maybe write a letter, or gave a call, or <laughs> you didn't, you know, and uh, I'm still waiting, by the way, but now I don't need it anymore. What are the keys to the match for you against Andy? Um, I think uh, aggressive, you know, uh, the way I, I usually always play. Um, we've had some very different type of matches against each other where, you know, we tried to joke around each other, you know, around the court, uh, or just loop the ball in or play really aggressive. Um, so I think it's very tactical always against him. Um, from my side, I'll play very aggressive, Andy, if you're listening. Uh, I'll come in on your... <laughs> I'll come in on your backhand, you'll pass me, I'll drop shot you, you'll lob me, I'll hit it through the legs, and... <laughs> so it's gonna be something like that. First win I had against him. Um, every time we played, we went the distance. Uh, best of three sets, we go three. Best of five, we go five. Um, hopefully, we don't play each other anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes out here I ask you questions about records that you have because you have so many different records. Can you remember the last time that you lost in a third round of a major? I'll pick the French Open against Gustavo Kirten, 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. 6 what year? 2004. I was a number one seed. <laughs> so let's turn the page now. You're into the quarterfinals for about the 750th straight time. I think it's 31, which is, of course, your record. Well, do you feel the match shifting at that moment when you put that T-shirt on? Does that change things? Put it on because I have big muscles. I got to keep them warm. So, <laughs> reflexes, muscles. It's going to be this kind of an interview. Okay, I got it. It's, it's particularly my left arm that's so impressive. I think that's what shocks all the opponents when I walk out and they see that big, huge left arm when I'm tossing the ball. Scary, scary stuff. Your record against players in their home country in Grand Slams is incredible. I think only twice you've lost. Why do you keep beating up on the hometown heroes? Well, why do you do that? It's not smart, man. It's not smart. I know, I know. It's definitely not smart. Um, but it's nice that you guys sort of invite me back every year. And uh... Andy Murray, what's going to be the key for you going up against Andy in the semis? Um, look, I got to recover a little bit, but I'm I'm gonna be fine. I'm getting I'm I'm young, you know. I'll recover quick. <laughs> uh, compared to the seniors, you know, yeah, of course. You. <laughs> <laughs> no. you know, I've had better days on my back and I've worse days. Like I think you like yourself as well. We've we've struggled over the years, you know, but uh, we try to make it work somehow, and then. And then tonight was one of the better days. I think I was able to mix it up well, take it early sometimes, and also give myself time. So it's one of those nights where I'm happy it worked out. Yeah, my backhand is horrible. Thanks for reminding everyone. And I'm looking forward to, to playing against him in matches. Like you said, he's got a much better backhand than I have. So I didn't I, say that. Well, better I, than mine. I, I, I think he has. So up to me <laughs> to figure it out. Your backhand looked awesome tonight. We had one viewer question. It's a bizarre one, but I'm going to ask it on this. People were commenting two socks. Is that a usual thing? Do you always wear two pairs of socks? Who told you I'm wearing two socks? Are you checking me out? Or? It's a viewer question. Okay. okay. Um, 
Why two socks? Um, I've been wearing two socks for some time. Even my girls don't understand why I'm wearing two socks. Um, they ask me, why, Papa? And I tell them, well, it's softer that way. Over five sets, I, fi I figure I have a bit more cushioning, even though the shoes these days are not what they used to be. So that's, that's why, if you were a question guy. Last year, you were not feeling necessarily your best with your back. But I've read some stories. Sounds like your, your body's doing a little bit better now. How, how would you say your, your body's feeling all, overall? Good. I'm, I'm just happy waking up in the morning and feeling not like an old man, so that's very positive. Uh, felt like that. You're, you're looking right at me when you say that. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. <laughs> you're not that old. A little bit old. <laughs> I gave him a call and he thought about it for a while. So uh, I'm, I'm happy that uh, he said yes, and we're going to do a few weeks together in the team. Uh, as of this year, and uh, for me it's a thrill because he's the one I used to watch the most next to Boris and Pete um, growing up, so it's... Uh... I'm right here, buddy. I'm right here. <laughs> well, you took him out. That's why I don't like you so much. <laughs> um, I have no choice but to stay out here and, and try to tell myself I'm actually still in the lead, so it's not, not that bad. Um, clearly it was tough because you're sitting there you think I could be talking to you right now, it could be all fun and games, but no. Um, I'm probably one of the guy who, guy who misses more breakpoint opportunity than other guys, so I'm kind of used to it. And then, <laughs> and then you stay positive that you gave yourself a chance and you miss another one, but you know what, I'll give myself another chance. You miss one more, sure, then I want to you know, do something, maybe toss a ball out of the stadium or something, but uh, I never do it. I keep my composure and try to keep the poker face, and uh, it worked tonight. In common, Rod's got his own building. You have a building in Basel where you're from named after you, so that's, uh, that's not bad. Not quite yet? It's going to be soon. All right, well, next up, I let the cat out of the bag. Sorry about that. Top secret. Uh, Before, what, what was... What was going on for you just waiting to go on the court? Any, anything special tonight? Anything happen? Anyone come see you in the player restaurant? Um, no, just n normal stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, a Rod Laver came around. I mean, I don't know if that's... That's what I was asking Yeah, about. no, no, you're right. I don't know where you were but that you saw me, but uh, no, you came oh, yes. to say hello, which was very nice. I appreciate that always. It's a great moment. Uh, it's motivated and inspiring. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Rocket, good to see you. Thank you. I'm always watching, always watching. <laughs> well, you had a lot of great tennis minds around you, not only the Rocket, but you've added a, a new person to your team. Severin Luthi has been with you a long time as your coach. Now you have Ivan Lubacic, who's not only coaching you, but you also played against him. What's it like to have a peer now helping you as a coach? Yeah, I think that's a first uh, for me. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. No, I don't think so, but it's the first time that I have someone in my team that actually I played against, and we played a ton against each other. So I thought it'd be an interesting situation as well to have somebody on the team who's played against a lot of the guys I play against nowadays and who also to figure out my game maybe so they can give me good advice. Um, you know, he's good on the team. I know him since a long, long time, obviously, and it's been nice working with him. He left already. He's already scouting the next match, I guess. But anyway, uh, he played great here last year, being Rafa. So I got my, uh, my hands full and I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad you unclassed. You had like negative body language going with me. You had your arms closed. Now you're open. Now I feel like we can start talking oh, a little bit, okay? It. All right? Good. Come with me. All right. The family. I haven't had a chance to talk to you much. Give me the update on the family. The kids are getting a little bit older, a little bigger. How many languages are they speaking? <laughs> well, the boys are one and a half. I don't know. So three languages? Four? Yeah, three or four words, maybe, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and those, that language is Swiss German, I think, and maybe a bit of uh, names. I don't know what names are for you, what language, but uh, no, it's, uh, it's the cutest thing ever. Again, I'm happy I'm going through it once again with my wife. It's, it's beautiful, and uh, the girls are six and a half now. They're just incredible. Um, a lot of, sorry, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of educational stuff going on right now. So that's a, that's a challenge, but I love. Visit with with your wife Mirka prior to the match, and, and she told me, you know, I probably shouldn't share this with. Well, I'm going to share it with a few of our friends anyway. She said you had like a, a special diet treat last night, like pre-match, something that you probably don't do that often to get ready. Maybe your kids brought it for you. Did you eat something special last night? Did I? Maybe some ice cream or something. Oh, yeah, I like my ice cream and I like my chocolate and that's my diet. So th what? Th that's nothing normal. This don't is like tell a, me that. This that's is like an right. every, everyday thing. I like my treats. Absolutely. So 
I don't feel even bad about it. I feel good that I can do it and play tennis at the same time. <laughs> well, you... well, I'll tell you what. You make me feel bad about it, because look at you, 35 years old, playing like that. Get out of here, Roger Federer. We'll see you in a couple nights. Well, it's been nice to see you pick up so quickly after six months off tour. I mean, your, your talent is intact. We know you're such an amazing athlete, but I think I've found a weakness in you, Roger Federer. I looked hard. Actually, you showed us. You posted a video with Grigor Dimitrov and Tommy Haas. You guys were doing a little bit of singing this week. I think we may even have it. All right, we can wrap, that's enough. That's enough, we got enough, that was enough. <laughs> All right, two questions. Is this sort of a normal Grand Slam thing that you do? And the second question is, who has the terrible pitch? Who's, whose voice is that? Is that you? Are you the really poor singer in that group or is that Tommy? Be honest. I thought it was terrible acoustics in that room, you know? <laughs> oh God. I didn't even know that song that well. I've heard it many, many times, but the lyrics was not my thing, so that's why I think my voice was playing up a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> and I thought Tommy saved us. His song, he sang this song many, many times, so he was just putting up the, the lyrics for, for us, and Grigor, I think he just, just looks good. His voice was terrible. <laughs> But the pianist was the best. David was the best. <laughs> yeah, David Foster produced that song. Roger Federer, you produced some great tennis again. Game right now. Um, I'm happy already for him that he's gotten this far, but he does need to go one step further, you know, so <laughs> it's enough right now. But uh, no, I'm, I'm looking forward to the match. Of course, Stan knows I'm joking somewhat. <laughs> You're putting the big brother on him right there. Well, speaking of, uh, well, I'm going to speak of family because you have your big family with you here. You have four children. What have they been up to in Australia? You've been in Australia now for a couple of weeks, right? You came in early to Perth. So how have they enjoyed the country? What have they been doing? Uh, they've been busy, you know, their kids. They never just sleep all day like we do. Um, so, <laughs> or do we, do you? I don't sleep. I don't know what you're talking about. There you go. Well, with the late night sessions here, I had to sleep in in the morning. So they knew that, um, you know, dad can't be around that much in the mornings, but they really enjoyed Australia. Perth, they had a blast uh, here as well. Melbourne, they know better, obviously, because they've never been to Perth before. And uh, they've been active. They go outside every day and, uh, um, they told me many times, please don't lose, Daddy. We don't want to stay here for longer. <laughs> for the first time today, one of my daughters said, it's actually okay, I'm happy to go skiing in Switzerland now. So, so I was like, come on. Yeah. Give, give me one more match here. Maybe I can hang around for a couple more days. I think she's going to be all right with it. I got one more tough question, then we'll get to the good stuff, okay? You're treated for an injury timeout. After the four set, what was your issue? Well, I've had a, a leg thing going on for the, the week, so, um, and I felt it for, from sort of the second game on in the match. I don't know why, but and I just said, you know what? I never take injury timeouts. Stan already took his, so I guess people won't be mad, and, and Stan won't be mad, hopefully, and uh, it wasn't the, on the set change, and, you know, you just hope it, something works, so. That physio, he's got some magic hands going on. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but leg thing is a little uh, unspecific. Is there a like, calf, quad? What's, what's the, because you look like you're moving really well. Yeah, I thought I was moving actually the same way like in the first couple of sets. I'm not sure how much it brought to me, but uh, so if you go off the court, that yeah. means the treatment is further up the leg. <laughs> you don't need to be more specific. That's enough. We're going to move along. We're not that specific. Yeah. We're still talking about the leg, right? No, we're moving on to the fifth set. We're, we're leaving that. Uh, fifth set. These things are getting looser and looser, these interviews. Let's talk about your greatest rival in your career, Rafael Nadal, and, and what he's meant to you. And Just look into that matchup and give us a little preview of how you'd be looking forward to that match. Yeah, it's real now. Um, I can really actually talk about playing a finals uh, for the first time. Um, I've been dodging that bullet, you know, for the last, uh, 
last sort of days now, not talking about the next round and the next round, but this is the last one. So I'll leave it all out here in Australia. And if I can't walk for another five months, that's okay. So, uh, so I'll, I'll give it all I have. Um, Rafa has definitely presented with me with the biggest challenge in the game. Um, I think I played him too many times on clay early in my, in my career, and I think that had something to do then the way I played him on different surfaces too. But uh, I think this court allows me to play offensive. Um, I mean, I'm probably his number one fan of Rafa. I think his game is just tremendous. He's an incredible competitor, and uh, I'm, I'm happy we did have some epic, epic battles over the years. And um, of course, it would be unreal to, to play here. I, I think both of us, we would have never thought that we were going to be here potentially playing in the finals because I went to open his, uh, his academy in Mallorca with him a few months back, and uh, I told him, look, I wish we could do like a charity match or like a something, <laughs> but I was on one leg. He had the, the wrist injury and we were playing some mini tennis with some juniors and we're like, that's the best we can do right now. <laughs> a few months later, we're maybe going to be in the finals. I am, he may be. So it's, it's, I think it's very special for both of us this tournament already. So I just hope it's going to be a good match. Excellent. And then you, who were you practicing with in Dubai? I, I, I'm going to end this real soon, I promise. We got time, you know. I mean, like this, uh, like this, we don't need to. I don't need to do any interviews anymore for the rest of the year. It's just perfect, you know. <laughs> and we can share. It. Look forward to that match. Um, I have one more thing. It's not. It's not really a question. It's more of a statement, you know. They tell me to, to make sure you're standing on that corner when we do that interview, but they also say if he goes back, you have to go back with him. Why are we here? We started up there. What, what, what are we running from? Well, the camera's too close. I'm scared of them, you know? <laughs> so I thought here we're a little bit more safe, but uh, no. I mean, I always like doing interviews with you, James. I'm not running away from you. I appreciate that. Uh, honestly, I haven't seen too much of Zonga, but uh, I saw a little bit against uh, Eugenie last night, and no, he was impressive, no doubt. Uh, he's a hell of an athlete, and, uh, you know, he gets the job done. He's young as well. Again, another youngster, but, you know, I like be being surrounded by those guys. You know, they don't have the experience I have, so that's it. <laughs> So that's good, and uh, it's going to be exciting. You know, explosive tennis, we always get that from Rafa, and uh, I always enjoy watching Rafa play more than playing against him. Well said. You've given a great interview, but uh, you made one mistake. You can't say hell of a on, te on television. Do you know that? Now I know. All right, well, you're in the semifinals, so nice job, Raj.